Hello everybody and welcome back to Aquarian Skies. So following on from my previous episode where I successfully unlocked the Ender Quarry, I am going to use this episode to test the Ender Quarry and hopefully it'll be very quick and easy and then I'm going to smash my way through some reward bags. So that's the uh, the promise for the end of this episode is hopefully to grab some reward bags. There's no bonus ones yet available. How far away are we from things like milk? 45%, sludge 36%. Ethanol's not started again yet. I can easily throw another honey out there when it when it clocks on. When's it going to run out? Yeah, about 14 hours, so very soon. Not really worth doing that one. Anyway, so we have the ender quarry, and we have this giant column of stone. Now, I'm only going to fly up here once, just to remind you how massive it is. I'm going to use the warp book for moving forward. But we have up here, oops, a area of stone. Now I believe, like the old sort of build craft quarry, you kind of need to put the area you want to quarry inside the zone. So it won't quarry the uh, the area underneath the, the markers. So the markers that this particular quarry uses is fences. Yep, simple as that. So if we put a fence all the way around this stone, like so, it should allow us to quarry all of the contents in the middle. Now, I am fully aware that it's only stone in the middle, but that's kind of the point. Because what's going to happen here, as the rain starts to fall, is it's going to collect all of that stone for me, so that I can use it to obviously uh, speed up the process. Now, if this is a proof of concept, obviously. So I believe you have to attach the quarry to the corner. And then successfully established bounty, scanned, mining. Why is it trying to... What's power? Where's it getting power from? So if I attach this Tesseract... And tell it it's going sending power receiving items and it is going to be sending items and receiving only on power so receiving power sending items let's see what it does oh there we go so it started to change things into dirt now in the concept of going back to my main pc quickly and then down here i want to turn this off for now so, uh, 100,000, a million. So let's put it onto a million. So it's only going to work if there's a million cobblestone in my system. Now hopefully we should see the cobble going up. Okay, it's going up quite a lot. What we should be seeing over there is that big column of the cobblestone Go to bed. <laughs> the big column of stone being turned into a big column of dirt. Hopefully that'll sort the rain out for us. So yes, this is currently producing dirt. Well, it's currently converting the stone into dirt. That's the dream anyway. So that'll do that for us. Apparently including going above, which is unexpected. So while it does this, so it's not the, the most rapid thing in the world, but it is definitely showing you which column it's currently turning into dirt. So we should be able to catch up to it. There we go. So as you can see it's coming down here and it's just basically turning stone into dirt. Now obviously I can collect dirt very easily if I have a bound shovel. So I'm going to go and create a said bound shovel and then we're sorted, aren't we? That will, leave, that will give me a crap load of dirt as well. So if we take a shovel, is there an activation crystal in here? Let's just check my mob essence network. Oh, blood it is, is working fine. So it's still recovering from a recent bout of 
manufacture that I did in preparation for something that might have to happen in the near future. But we'll come to that. So I need my activation crystal. That's fair enough. Don't need to walk over there because I can just jump. Okay. So if we activate this and then throw the shovel in there, I'll get zapped. But, and again, apparently, getting zapped twice not so much fun. And I get a bound shovel. So the bound shovel obviously works the same as the bound pick, but does so with dirt rather than with stone. Should we build a bound axe as well, just so I can go take that tree out? I think I might. I've got a diamond axe somewhere, I thought I had. So let's quickly build the bound axe. And then we will wait for the quarry to finish. And while we're doing that, I will look at some Okay, apparently that's not doing what I wanted to do. Look at some other quests that we can complete. I just realized why I've stopped doing what I was doing over there. Oops, missed. I like how it doesn't set the ones I'm putting on top of on fire. That's quite cool. So there we go. It's a bound sword and a bound axe now. Probably should complete the uh, complete the set of tools. Not, I think, any use for a bound, anything else. Okay, so let's put the weak activation crystal back in there. Got the bound axe. You don't need to see me chop down a tree, really. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh, yes. Toast. I have 10,000 toast now. So I can finish that quest. So let's go to Hell's Kitchen. Toast, select, change you to toast, tell you to output toast, and then we'll let this rock up to 10,000. So I need to put you away, put you away, put you away, put you away. Just going to clear some space in my inventory just for the purpose of opening as many reward bags without needing to uh, keep reopening things. Residual 2018, I can put you away. Okay. So that's at 65%. So it's going to give us a couple of raw bags as well. Probably something a bit less impressive. Come on. 86, 87. So this is a long time quest in the in the in the process of getting us here, isn't it? Let's be honest. So 97, 98, 99, 100%. So this, I need to stop this dumping all the bread because it will, might continue to dump it all out. So we'll just claim the reward bags and the heart. Dump the heart in there. So we ended up with another great reward bag and I guess another epic reward bag. Is that why it didn't show up in my favorite place? So Ender Quarry is still converting that into to stone. I'm not 100% convinced that this is coming through from there, but I'm pretty sure it is because I don't have any other cobble gen entering my system at anywhere near the rate of four or eight a second. So 1,001, 1,002, yeah, it's about eight a second. So eight a second on the cobble is not as efficient as I'd like it to be, but at the same time, it's going to be effectively just converting power into cobblestone. So let's open some reward bags. Let's do something ridiculous. So we're going to have a lot of reward bags to open. Lettuce, should we just check what my lettuce status is like? So I have 40,000 lettuce of the 50,000 that I need. So we're getting there. We're getting there very slowly and surely. So we've got 21 great reward bags. The first one is two magnum torches. Not bad. Second one is a book that holds efficiency three. Now, unfortunately, if I look in my filing cabinet of books, I have efficiency three, they're in alphabetical order, aren't they? I have a couple of efficiency threes. And apparently it's not an enchanted book, it's just a book, which is slightly more irritating. So we have to go down here now to my new enchanting system, 
oops, I've got some, and that will remove that from the, uh, if it, uh, all my, blah, 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 blah. all my enchanted items now fall into here, and I'm still manually trying to sort them out, but it just means that they're not clogging up my system as much as they used to be. So I've got eight beef jerky, which wasn't so great. Another golden Nixon, not so great. Diamond horse hammer, not so great. Orange saplings, not so great. Servos, free, useful. A writing pick, not so great. Pearl oysters, not so great. Punji sticks, not so great. Blood saplings, not so great. One of every coloured brick, which is annoying. Have I got coloured bricks somewhere? No. I don't really want to fill my system with all this, uh, this stuff, but I'm going to have to. So that's probably already got a house. Beef jerky might have a house. Saplings might have a house. Coloured bricks. I know you don't have a house, but I'll sort one out for you in a minute. Magnum torch. Oh, the sharpness five, though, is a good thing to have on that. So again, we will just steal it because sharpness five on horse armour, not so great. So steal that off there. Okay, so we'll put that in there. I'll open some more. Some mutton jerky. Some cherry jelly and some black produce. Nether gold ore. Nether copper ore. An amaranth trap door. Pomegranate saplings. An angle door and a creeper doll. Some more punji sticks. And some more mutton jerky. So, not the best set of greater rewards ever. Not really going to complain too much about them though, because as ever they are totally free. I think I've already got some Amorite trapdoors, have I? Yes, that's fantastic. Let's jump over this wall to my chest of stuff. There is actually use to those, you can actually use them to create little uh, necklaces and things, but I don't really care because I've got a better system, been system set up. So we have 17 epic reward bags. Let's see what epic rewards we get, or more likely, what troll rewards we get. So, Rune of Sacrifice, good, I'm happy with that. Rune of Sacrifice, good, I'm happy with that. One of each shard, that's 16 of each shard. A 64k fluid store is quite nice. Lamp of Growth, I had to make 16 of those for a quest, so that's not really, really a problem. Nether, I need to sort out my nether ores. Some efficiency runes, so again, free runes is always nice. A silver sapling and some aura nodes. Fair enough, aura nodes is, is not needed anymore. Hill trace saplings. Might help with the trees. The wood golem. Juniper sapling. Not really sure what that, that is. Two golden lassoes. Are they full or empty? They're empty. Some more runes of sacrifice. Some more aura nodes. Uh, effectively everything that you would get for fishing. Again, mariculture and the actual act of fishing is probably something I don't need to worry too much about. But, you know, free stuff is free stuff. Another wooden golem. 64k storage. That, that's not a bad set of epic reward bags. It's not the best things I've ever had in my life. But, you know, the shards just save me a bit of work to collect them. Um, the lamp of growth. Don't know if the lamp of growth is having any effect on my Amarath wood. I feel like I've lost some Amarath wood. I don't know why that, that looks doesn't look right. So if I plant some saplings, do this does this trigger them? It did look like it got a flash of growth. Now you can't plant these with a planter, I found out. So I am going to need to teach a golem how to do it. But for now, I'll just quickly throw down. Oops by hand just to double check to make sure I am getting growth ticks from the lamps of growth looks like I am as long as I'm getting those growth ticks then I just happily throw down another lamp of growth can't I Bump. no problems with that okay so I'm pretty sure there was a quest when for the hoarding to hand in a crap load of runes of sacrifice so 128 so I've got 12 for free, and obviously I've been collecting some every single time I get the ethanol. So I'm now up to 68, so that's halfway there, which is not too bad. 
So the ink sacks appear to be running low, which is interesting. I'm glad I caught that. So I need to go and turn this on clearly. And probably find a better way of collecting all of this. Because I didn't realise it's not connected to the system. So I spent a lot of time troubleshooting my network and sorting things out and actually missed one of the most simplest things I haven't done yet, which is connect my fissure to the network. Uh, 64k storage. I'm probably going to need to upgrade something in, in a short period of time to 64k. Can I put fluid in there? Yeah, I'll just store it in there for now. So efficiency ruin, runes, silver saplings, juniper bush, hill cherries, aura nodes. See, I don't really want to dunk, dunk those just around just yet because... I don't 100% know what they're going to do. So that is now working its way through and doing what it needs to do. So I will leave you temporarily. And I'll come back to you when this quarry's finished. And when the quarry's finished, I will show you how I'm going to collect the dirt. Because hopefully it's going to be very quick and very easy. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you can see the benefits of the quarry system now. And I will see you again soon for a finish to the episode after I've sorted out whatever it is that needs to be sorted out to get this quarry done. So back in probably, how long is left, do you reckon? Done that far in about 15 minutes, so probably an hour. So see you in about an hour. Bye for now. Welcome back, everybody. And um, firstly, whoa. Mostly because the last death that you'll see over my shoulder here is a death which came out of nowhere, and it's a death that wrecked my game. So um, I am very, very... I was very, very nearly out of agrarian skies um, i've lost quite a lot of stuff but also duplicated quite a lot of stuff in a weird kind of my game totally froze and ruined itself and i don't really understand what happened and i had to recover my save by replacing parts of my map with the um last world download so i had to go back a little bit into my data packs etc in order to try and recover simply because at the point of the death something happened and, and basically chaos erupted now it's happened twice um annoyingly so i'm a bit concerned about whether or not my game will will continue to work so this could be the end of agrarian skies as a let's play but hopefully i've managed to remove the offending item which i believe was the energetic bees so out there on the platform that you'll see i had energetic bees running and it was causing lightning strikes now the lightning strikes ruined my house because it caught that on fire um and it ruined the fence it ruined the alveary it basically was just wrecking everything so it was just causing huge amounts of um extra activity so i moved it way out there so that hopefully that it wouldn't um cause any problems and because they require a redstone torch rather than flowers it was easy just to keep them separate but the lightning strikes ha have stopped because i've turned them off because i'm thinking it's that that's causing the problems but anyway to finish this episode all i wanted to do was have a look at getting hold of this dirt from this dirt column because once this proof of concept is finished we should be well and truly on the way to doing a lot of very cool things so i need the bound shovel and i'll keep my sword just in case but hopefully i can put everything else in here and i'm going to keep my mysterious magnet uh i haven't actually looked oops i haven't looked at the bound saw uh, shovel with the thermonomicon always forget that I should keep doing this because there's always extra research points to uh, to find but basically I'm going to get my diggers backpack or diggers backpacks which ones so how do I get this aha uh -huh. so it's diamond diggers backpack and woven silk which I can now get so if I make two giant sort of backpacks that should be allow me to uh, collect most of not all of that dirt so the woven silk is in here and I need some more so that's our water buckets and this system isn't particularly great at accepting water is it it's not the cleverest system in the world but that should be enough so I need some silken wisps, or wisp, whatever it is. And if I can make 10 or so of these diggers backpacks, then I can take it to the nether and just collect like ridiculous resources from there. So it's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. So take that away now. Okay. So I need a diamond, which I have 400 of, so that's not a problem. And oops, needs to go in there. And I've run out of water again. Apparently this thing is thirsty. Okay, so it doesn't like the fact that it's in a mode, so let's turn it into back into basic mode. So I'll make us a woven diggers book pack. So I've got two 45 slots. That should be our... As I say, it stopped for some reason. Two 45 slots, which should be good. Obviously, I'm going to use my bound shovel to collect all of the resources. So just while that's building, let's just see how many energetic combs I've got over here. 38. So that should be close to enough, I would imagine, to, uh, to finish the quest. So, comb... Yeah, I've got 50 in here, so I've got loads. So, it was a... Um, quest, so the quest book. So we'll go in here and quickly, uh, ooh, for the horde, I've got to go with the flow quests. I killed some zombies, have I? So bees and trees, open, and then manual submit, energetic combs. Excellent. We should have an extra backpack in here. Okay, so we turn it into like pick up mode and then we take our bound shovel over here where we have this giant column of dirt which includes dirt up top apparently so now we have this giant column of dirt if I turn the bound shovel on it should start collecting me the dirt as you can see, it's only doing it above me at the moment, which is not really a problem, but the quarry went above me as well, clearly. So if I come off the edge here, oops, and just because I don't want snowballs, chuck them away. If I stand like here, yeah, it's gonna take a lot more dirt, which is good. Again, I don't want you or you. So basically, I'm just going to have to keep, you know, going down and collecting dirt. So this is all I intend to do when it comes to recovering the dirt. It's just, it's relatively quick and easy. I've got a very happy blood. Oops, I keep pressing shift. Blood set up as far as keeping the blood network full. So I'm happy that this is going to be the most efficient way just to collect a giant tower of dirt. So I don't need you to watch the whole of this, so I will do it and then I will bring you back for the grand total. So as you can see behind me, I have returned back and all of the dirt is gone. Now it didn't quite go as I had originally planned because it turns out my blood network isn't quite as full or as large as it needs to be to be able to do that whole tower in one go. So I had to do quite a lot of it manually with my flux and fuse shovel and a resident capacity in order to keep the energy going. But I have put a stop on my network technically and it got me 39, well it actually got me about 38,000, uh, 35,000, 38,000? 35,000 dirt. So 35,000 cobble then converts into 35,000 dirt. Requires a bit of a manual gathering at the moment, but I'm gonna to look to automate that slightly better in the future. So that's that's the current attack uh, strategy for generating cobble in a reasonably large amount. So I'll put the water tower back, I'll put the pump back on, that will put the uh, stone back into place, and then I'll turn the quarry on and it'll turn it back into dirt, and then I'll collect it. And I'll perhaps look at using, um, or finding a, a more automatic way of gathering the dirt. If I bring it down a couple of levels, maybe 10 levels or so, then I should have some room to work. And there is a Thorncraft mining um, 
laser drill thing that might be useful. But other than that, it's uh, it's been another good episode, another good bit of progress made, and uh, we are well. I am very happy that I have achieved the uh, the tower of of cobble, and it's another option for us. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. I uh, hope you continue to enjoy the series, and as ever, I will see you again soon for the next episode. Bye for now, guys.